Welcome to Horizons of Thought. Today, I'm going to talk to you about economic disparity and a personality trait on the big five personality scale called trait openness. Let me explain what I mean by both these things. Economic disparity is a reference to the divide or the difference between the poorest in our society and the richest in our society. Economic disparity is a very serious issue. Historians and political scientists and modern thinkers have all concerned themselves with this issue. This is partly because the greater the economic disparity you have in the society, the more male violence you get. It isn't poverty itself that inclines some men towards violence and criminality, but a difference between the wealthiest and the poorest in society that does so. It is also the case that great economic disparity creates a lot of suffering. There are parts of the world where economic disparity is much greater than you're used to seeing anywhere in the first world, even in the United States, where there's more of it than many first world countries. This economic disparity creates serious problems. It creates food insecurity. It creates health insecurity. It creates employment insecurity. And this is a breeding ground for famine, for disease, for exploitation, and other horrors of this world. And so as a result, people have tried to come up with many different solutions to deal with the problem of economic disparity. And that brings me to the second point that I'm talking about, personality traits, trait openness. A trait open person is more likely to be curious about the things of the world. They're more likely to be creative. They're more likely to study at universities and they're as a result, as they age, they tend to get a tiny bit smarter than trait closed people who are, on the other hand, more likely to want to follow the traditions of their society and more likely to want to pick safer and more stable paths for themselves. These folk typically are more, more typically stay in their community, they more typically they stay in their relationships. But here are some of the consequences of these differences. Trait openness is strongly related, as I said, to creativity. And creative endeavors are risky. We all know about the stereotype of the starving artist. We know about the stereotype of the starving actor. We know about all of the issues that can happen with doing any creative endeavor. If you live long enough, you've known people who have run businesses that didn't do very well because they started out a new business and had trouble growing. This is very, very common. But at the same time, it's not very hard to notice those who are incredibly successful at creative endeavors. Everybody knows the name of Steve Jobs and Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. Everybody knows who the great sculptor and painter Michelangelo was. These folks had prosperity in their lifetime. And in the case of Michelangelo, their works have an incalculable value for the societies that hold possession of those things today. Billions and billions of dollars of tourism money made every year, at least back when we used to have tourism. Now, when you think about that, you should realize that, that creative endeavors create economic disparity. They make a group of people poorer and a few people very, very wealthy. In comparison, more conservative choices for job seeking, where you stick with something uh, tried and true like medicine or nursing or accounting or carpentry or any of the basic trades, these jobs are stable. They tend to pay better than the worst versions of creative jobs, but they're also much harder to use as a stepping stone towards gathering extreme wealth. So these non-creative decisions, they flatten economic disparity. And these kinds of trends exist throughout the span of trade openness and personality traits. If you're open to new experiences, maybe you're open to taking drugs and maybe you get addicted and you make yourself very poor. Maybe you're open towards relationships that change quickly, which destabilize your economic situation and can also make you poor. On the other side, if you're conservative, you might stay in difficult or even abusive relationships when you want to have gotten out for your own health and safety. But for the most part, what you end up doing is creating more stable environments for yourself. 
if you stay in the same relationship, you don't move too often, you work steady and hard at a mundane but honorable and useful profession, you can often keep and even accumulate a small amount of wealth and continue the process of flattening economic disparity. So all of this is to say, when you think about how we handle economic disparity in our societies, there are political solutions like having more welfare, like having income redistribution, like having uh, estate taxes to prevent accumulation of wealth over generations. And there are more personal solutions like staying in stable relationships, picking stable work. If you are creative, also having a stable day job that you can do to back those situations up. These different avenues all look very different to people. It's quite easy to imagine that your particular solution to the problem of economic disparity is the only one that works. This is, I think, a great source of conflict between trade open and trade closed people, which manifests in arguments between liberal and conservative political parties and political groups. But all of these tactics can work towards reducing economic disparity and done badly, they can all backfire. Again, if you believe in staying in stable relationships, but the person you picked is abusive or cruel, you can diminish your own mental capacity, you can make yourself miserable, and you can allow somebody who probably needs to be punished or put in jail to continue to prosper at your own expense. In contrast, if you're thinking more along the lines of political solutions to economic disparity, it's very easy to make economic redistribution systems that foster dependency and reduce productivity. There are welfare programs in Canada, for instance, that have now created five and six generations of people who have been dependent on those systems. It's not an easy life. It may flatten economic disparity to a certain degree, but it also breeds its own kind of misery. So whatever path or thoughts you have on the issues of economic disparity, it's worth considering that you could be wrong about your particular choices and to be careful about that and that your solutions are not the only ones that exist out there and that there are reasons why other people who are doing other things and living in different ways come up with the solutions that they come up with. Societies need creative people. They need them to prosper as a whole. The entire society benefits from this, but it's really obvious that some of the things that fall out of creative endeavors and a large number of people engaging them is that you often need societal solutions to help them with their economic disparity. It's just a different way of doing things than what conservatives might choose to do to follow a stable path. It doesn't necessarily better or worse for the individuals. You have to consider why it is that they're doing this. Maybe they have to be creative to stay sane. Certainly that's true for me. If I'm not creative, I go crazy. So last thing I'll say on this is economic disparity is not an easily fixed item. Whatever solutions you try to come up with, you not only have to think about how they go wrong, but you have to also think about how they can never quite succeed in solving this problem. Dis economic disparity comes out of something called a Pareto or logarithmic distribution problem. And this problem isn't not something you can blame on capitalism. It's not something you can blame on feudalism before. It's not something you can blame on any simple process like what kind of government you're in by itself. All those things can make it worse, but they didn't create the problem in the first place. The problem is fundamental to the physical organization of matter in this universe. You get big and small galaxies. You get a few really big stars and a lot of smaller stars. You'll get bigger planets and smaller planets. You're going to get bigger animals and smaller animals. You will find this kind of distribution of any measure of size, including wealth, exists in this world everywhere in the physical and biological realms. It is a fact of reality. All you can do with economic disparity, and we know this from millennia of human behavior, all you can do is work to reduce its harmful effects. 
you cannot completely eliminate it. So when you think about the policies you want to do and engage in, you've got to be very careful to make sure that you don't cause more harm. And you've got to be very careful to realize that as it was once said by Jesus, you're always going to have the poor with you. You cannot just go frustrated and run away from that. It does not matter what kind of solutions you have. This is an issue that has to be dealt with all the time, no matter what your political or personal views are. It doesn't go away and it never will. So with that, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Horizons of Thought. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell so you get notifications. If you wish to support this channel, please go to the donor box link below and subscribe there. I give benefits based on the level of subscription. And again, I will see you in a few days.